put negative signs into the picture along with positive numbers that we're used to. I'd like to focus first on adding real numbers. And I'm going to concentrate on the first couple of problems of adding two real numbers that have like signs. That phrase, like signs, is very, very important. Um, we can do this visually via a number line, but I'm going to try to go directly to um, the, the quick method of adding two numbers with like signs. Here's an example problem. I'm, I may show a number line as well. If I wanted to take a negative 5 and add to that a negative 6, many, many people will illustrate this initially on a number line starting at 0. I would like to go to the left on the number line by um, 5 units because I want to go negative. So I'm going to move to the left those 5 units. I want to add to that a negative 6. So I've got to go to the left some more. 6 more units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 more units. And I will land at a negative 11. When you have two numbers that have like signs, you need to add their absolute values. The absolute value of a negative 5 is a positive 5. The absolute value of a negative 6 is a positive 6. Again, you need to add their absolute values, and then you need to apply the common sign that occurs with both of those two numbers. Um, I also, you can approach this as you have $5 of debt, you're going to add to that $6 of debt, and you are going to be even further in debt at a negative $11. So, if the signs are alike, add their absolute values and give your answer the common sign. Another example of a problem like this, um, just very, very similar, no number line. Let's just go ahead and see if we can remember the, the principle. If I have a negative 4 and I want to add a negative 3 to that, the absolute value of that is 4. The absolute value of this is 3. For a total of 7... And I'm going to apply the common sign of those two numbers. I'm at a negative 7. If I were to add two numbers that do not have uh, like signs, so for example, again, I'm just doing addition problems. If I want to take a negative 7 and add 2 to it, here I have to take their absolute values and subtract them. So the absolute value of a negative 7, this is how I would represent that, is 7. The absolute value of 2 is 2. And I should subtract those two values and get an answer of 5. And then I go back to the original problem. And of these two values, I look for the one that has the higher absolute value. The negative 7 has the higher absolute value, and that is the sign that I will apply to my answer. That negative 7, think of it as a number line, I would go to the left um, of 0, um, 7 units, and then come back just 2 to the right, and so I'd still be sitting at a negative 5. This negative 7 has more pull. Let's do one more. And I won't write down um, the absolute value brackets this time. So if I start with a positive 8 and I want to add a negative 5, this one has more pull. The absolute value of 8 is larger than the absolute value of a negative 5. So I know that my final answer is going to be positive. It is not necessary that I write a plus sign when my answer is positive. I really absolutely typically don't write that. So because this one has more pull, and I'm adding two numbers that have different signs, my answer will be positive, and then I subtract their absolute values. 8 and 5 are their absolute values. I subtract them and get 3, and I'm all done. Let's go ahead and look at one that's got multiple values. So about five numbers to add. Let's take a negative 15 and add a negative 37, 25, negative 59, and 3. Order of operations says that I should work from left to right. 
but I would like you to know that if you have any inclination to do this, if you'd like to combine all of those terms that have like signs, for example, that negative number, that negative number, and that negative number, because this is an addition, purely an addition problem, you would be welcome to do that. And then you can combine this positive number and that positive number to be a total of 28. And then you'd work with those two values and get your solution. I'm going to do the formal method first, so I'm going to work from left to right. So when I add these two numbers that have like signs, I add their absolute values. Looks like that's going to be 52. And I apply the common sign that they share. I'm now just going to bring down everything else in the problem so that I don't get sloppy. Next, I'm going to work from left to right. So I have a negative number and a positive number. So I have to subtract their absolute values. This one has more pull of those two. So my answer when I get those will be negative. And when I take 52 and subtract 25, I get 27. Let's bring everything else down. Again, let's work from left to right. I am now going to add a negative number and a negative number. So they have like signs. So I will add their absolute values. Those two add together to be 86. And their common sign that they share is a negative sign. And I add this 3 to it. These two have unlike signs, but this one has more pull. So my final answer will be negative. I have to subtract their absolute values, and 86 minus 3 is 83. And again, that sign has more pull, and there's my final answer. You could, again, please just remember, if you have any inclination in this problem, to just go ahead and combine the negative numbers together. So that would be, these all have like signs. Let's see if we can do that real quickly. So 15, 37, and 59 all add to be 111. And they would have a negative sign because they have like signs. 25 and 3 add to be 28. And now I would subtract these two absolute values and give my answer the negative sign because this one has more pull and 111 minus 28 is 83 and I get the same answer so again uh, when you are adding, it's a commutative process. You can do that in any order. So if you would like to combine those negative values together and then those positive values together and then finish that in that last step, that would be just great. Last problem I'd like to share with you in terms of addition is one involving a fraction. So let's say I have a negative one-fifth and a negative three-fourths that I want to add together. The 5 and the 4 in their denominators have a common denominator of 20. So we would say here that the least common denominator is 20 in this problem. So this 1 fifth needs to be multiplied by 4 over 4, that's 1, in order to get a denominator of 20. I would write this fraction, a negative 1 times 4 is a negative 4 over 20. And then this negative 3 fourths has to be multiplied by 5 over 5 in order to get a common denominator of 20. It is already a negative value. Negative 3 times 5 is a negative 15. That's something we've got to talk about here in a minute. And the denominator 4 times 5 is 20. And I am ready to now add these two fractions that have a common denominator. I am going to add their numerators only. Since they have like signs, I add their absolute values. So the absolute value of a negative 4 is 4. The absolute value of a negative 15 is 15. That adds to be 19. And because they have like signs, I have to put that like sign with my answer. And I get a final answer of a negative 19 over 20.